we have been considering the topic fruit of righteousness I do not intend to rush them but you take my time so that we will understand the message for the season for the church last Wednesday we did an overview for the parable of the sower as an understanding of the fruit of righteousness today by the grace of God we will continue in that fashion but we will narrow ourselves to the topic I call the wayside Christian the wayside Christian as a continuation of our topic but before we go there, I would like to read a passage and lay a foundation before we proceed. Let us open to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. We read from verse 16 to 20. Matthew, chapter 7, verse 16. He said, Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is held down and cast into fire. Wherefore, ye shall know them by their fruit. Now, 21. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. We have been considering the fruit of righteousness. I want to emphasize that there is a difference between the gift of righteousness and the fruit of righteousness. The gift of righteousness, as we have studied, some of you who have been in this house for some time, you know that the gift of righteousness is eternal life that God placed in our hearts. The moment we accepted the Lord Jesus, he gave us a gift of righteousness. And this gift of righteousness is given toward anybody who truly believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. Over the years, our emphasis and our rejoicing has always been that we have received the gift of righteousness. We are excited that God has given us the gift of righteousness. And we look at it and capitalize that since we have received the gift of righteousness, everything is what? Is dusted. And God begins to steer our hearts in this direction. That it is one thing to have the gift of righteousness. It is another thing to have the fruit of righteousness. Because it is the gift of righteousness in us. It is the seed that is expected to produce the fruits of righteousness. All together. So over the years, the church has been very comfortable that we have received the gift. But as I began to study the scriptures, I noticed something that the Bible is laying emphasis on. The Bible encourages us to receive the gift of righteousness, but it seems to me that the emphasis is not on the gift of righteousness, but on the word, the fruit of righteousness. And from this passage, if you look at it, the Bible said the word, you shall know them by their word, fruit. You do not know a Christian by the gift of righteousness that is inside of him because it is dormant. Even though a Christian may have the gift of righteousness in him, 
like many of us, I believe, have the gift of righteousness. But how many of us have the fruit of righteousness? We are not known by the gift of righteousness that we have received. Rather, we are known by the fruit of righteousness that we bear. Over the years, I've asked myself several questions. How do I know I'm a Christian? My thinking has changed over the years. Before I would say I'm a Christian because I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I'm a Christian because I have given my life, so to say, to the Lord, and that makes me a Christian. Of course, it's part of it. But I've come to realize Jesus said you shall know them by their word. <laughs> so what is an evidence that you are a Christian? It is not that you are a pastor. It is not that you, you play the guitar or that you sing in the choir. <clears throat> The only way you can know that you are a Christian is to discern the kind of fruit you are producing. I'm not the one who said it. He said, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But the corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. So a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth what? Good fruit. We must move ahead from just saying one day I know I gave my love to Christ and I feel a peace in my heart. It is not enough. Because from this passage we we'll come to understand that after Jesus said you will know them by their fruit, he now added in 21 and he said it's not everyone that said unto me Lord Lord that will enter the kingdom of God it is those who bear fruit it is not those who receive the gift if I wonder Lord was trying to explain this to me he was using the talent so he came and he gave what talent to men and somebody what took his talent and what and hid it so that it did not produce what fruit. The gift of righteousness that does not produce fruit is in fact a condemnation because at the end of the day it's a collecting that word and throw him into the outer darkness. How do you know that you are a Christian? Just look at the fruit you are producing. And I realize something. This fruit I'm talking about is, is there is no man that is a vacuum. It's either you are producing the fruit of the corrupt tree or you are producing the fruit of what? Of righteousness. Once you stop, once you are not in fact, if you want to know whether you are producing the fruit of the spirit, you need to check, am I producing the fruit of the flesh? Because the moment you are seeing yourself producing the fruit of the flesh, it certainly means that you are not producing the fruit of the spirit. Now let's take patience, for example, as a fruit of the spirit. The moment you do not produce fruit of patience, what do you produce? Fruit of fighting. Thank you, sister. Isn't it? The moment you do not produce the fruit of patience, you produce the fruit of adultery and fornication. The moment you don't produce the fruit of patience, you produce the fruit of rebellion. So you can actually look at your heart and ask yourself, what kind of fruit am I producing? And I tell you, you will not know the kind of fruit you are producing. You will not know what is inside of you until you are under what? Pressure. When you are put under pressure and you are pressed, what comes out? When you are in a tight corner and you are pressed, what comes out? 
comes out of you is the true nature of the fruit you are producing. And the Lord was insisting that you shall know them by your fruit. Why I'm laying this foundation is very important so that we will not be deceived. So that we will not go about calling ourselves Christians. We are comfortable in our Christian life. Because the story we have here is people who are very, very comfortable. Because when Jesus was asking them, I never knew you, they were not what? They were not convinced. How is it possible that the Lord did not know me? But he said, you shall know them by your feet. Are we allowing the fruit of joy, patience? Someone has got patience here. Are you patient? The fruit of kindness, the fruit of joy. Are we allowing them? Oh, we have replaced them by the beast of the flesh. The Bible mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 and 19, plenty say these are the works of the flesh, adultery, fornication, envy, jealousy, anger, wrath, malice. Let me tell you something. I don't deceive myself. Anytime I see things coming out of me that are not supposed to be there, I go and check and say, Kai. Because I'm very, very much convinced of this verse. At the end of the day, the judgment will not be based on whether you have accepted Jesus or not. I'm saying something straight on. At the end of the day, the judgment will not be based whether you are a pastor or not. At the end of the day, the judgment will not be based whether you perform miracles or not. At the end of the day, the judgment will not be based on whether you cast out devils before. No. You don't say by their fruits, you will not. And all them things are not important. I'm not saying confessing Jesus as Lord is not important. But confessing Jesus as Lord, has it taken you to that place when you are producing fruit? A man is no Christian who is not producing fruit of the Holy Spirit. So I want to help us so that we enter heaven confidently. Because I have been in a dark also concerning this matter for a very, very long time. You hear statements that well, we don't know who will go to heaven. Even an arm robber will tell you that what? Me and you, we don't know who will go to heaven. Now on that day, it will be a big surprise for everybody. It will only be a surprise for those who do not know the word of God. Because the Bible said even somewhere in 1 John, and this will tell you that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know that you have eternal life. And the only way you can know that you have eternal life is by their words, by their fruit. There are many things in life that can distract us. There are many things in life that can take us away from God. But people of God, one thing that must be your emphasis is the development of the fruit of the Holy Spirit within you. And the what? The putting down of the fruit of the flesh in your heart. That is the pursuit of the life of a Christian. The pursuit for the fruit to manifest. And that is why when we are discussing this, this series on the fruit of righteousness, I say this to make you understand that we are not wasting our time. Other people can waste their time. Other people can come and gather and talk about money. You can gather and they will teach you how to make money. 
They can teach you how to pass the exam. They are good. They can teach you how to make investment. But they can teach you how to find a marriage partner. I hope you know that many ministries are based on these things, isn't it? They are good. They are not bad. But if you miss out on the very important thing, then there is trouble. All those things are very fundamental. But when it comes to the core Christianity, the things that matters is are you producing the fruits? Have you been able to subdue the workings of the flesh? Have you been able to overcome your lust? Have you been able to overcome your covetousness? Have you been able to overcome your lies? Children, have you been able to overcome your disobedience to your parents? I want the way that prevents us from experiencing the fruit is the things we are looking in the passage. So I will take time now to discuss one of the hindrances. Matthew 13. Thirteen nineteen. When any man heareth the word of the kingdom of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received by the wayside. By the grace of God, I will be unveiling to us one of the reasons that fruits are not being born by the children of God because there are type of Christians that the Bible describes as the wayside Christian. I don't know whether we can even call them the wayside Christians at all. There are people in the church. Jesus said a sower went to sow. So there was nothing wrong with the sower because the sower was Jesus himself. There was nothing wrong with the seed because the seed is the word of God. But he said some fell on the wayside. There is a type of heart that cannot produce fruit. And that heart is the wayside. Why is it called a wayside? Wayside represents carelessness. This can we control this girl? Praise the Lord. The wayside represents a careless person. This is a person who comes to church. He delights in hearing the word of God. He's always what? Anxious to come and listen. But he will listen and he will not understand. And the Bible said about the wayside that the enemy will come and what? Steal the word from him so that he does not produce fruit. People of God, if you are here and you can check your life, you are not producing any fruit. When you are being exposed to the word of God, it is likely that you may be a wayside Christian. A wayside Christian hears the word of God. The wayside Christian listens to the word of God, but he never understands it. Let me tell you something. Anytime you are preaching, I am come to realize that you cannot send the devil out of church. 
You know that. You know that. Uh, you know that uh, demons here. Oh, you don't know. There are demons wherever they are gathered. The devil can go to heaven and attend meetings. The Bible says, He that is by the wayside does not understand the word of God. And I noticed for you to understand the word of God, there must be study. Many of you are students. If you have a lecture and you do not understand, what will you do? You carry your book, you go to class and sit down. That is if you have brain in your head. We all have brains in our head. Then you will sit. Sometimes you read onto your head is what isn't it? And you go to town, you put your head. And then you cool it, then you go back. The secret to understanding is digestion. We cannot produce fruit until we sit with the word of God. So the person who is by the wayside has no time to sit with the word of God. He does not look at the word and say, this thing, is it true? He does not digest the word. He does not labor in the word. So he does not have understanding of it. People of God, if we want to have understanding to defeat the devil who steals the word from us, we must be people who study the word. If I eat as any area in your life, they are not producing food. You know what I used to do? I'll go to bookshop. I'll go and check titles that is talking about that matter, three or four. I will sit with them over a long period of time digesting them. And thank God for concordance. You can just open concordance. If, for example, it's patience you want to you want to see manifest in you. Take a concordance and do a whole study from Genesis to Revelation. Any two to place, you see the word patience, you pick it and what and read it. Before long, the fruit of patience will begin to manifest in your life. But without that advanced study of the word, opening up to understanding, we will never be able to produce fruit and we end up as what people by the wayside. That is why people can be in the church for 20 years. Because the devil is always stealing the word. And the devil steals the word because you do not understand. And you do not understand because you have not stayed with the word. You have not persisted with the word. You have not studied the word on your knees. Prayer for me. The person by the wayside is a careless Christian. A person by the wayside is a spectator. He just come to church for fun of it. There's a many of you are known by the wayside. Because those ones you see them only on Sundays. You only come to church on Sunday. I used to say, if you come to church only on Sunday, when is speaking, it's not church you're coming to. It's a religion you're doing. Because everybody goes to church on Sunday. And sometimes people go to church only when they have new clothes. I know people like that. It's only when they have new clothes. Christians, but you will not see them on church, in church until when they have new clothes. I know one. One day he was going to church, he said, no, he told him, he said, I'll come late. When I come late, I'll go to the front seat. He saw the new suit. He <laughs> said, so I'll go to the front, I will sit down. So that people, you think it's not happening? You think it's not happening? <laughs> it's happening. 
That's why some of you say when you come to church, tie your head. You will not tie your head. Because you have spent what? You have spent 10,000 on the what? On the hair. Why should I tie you? Let everybody what? See. You know the other day I buy iPhone. So I went and bought cover that covers everything. I said, no, why will I buy an iPhone? No, 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 no. <laughs> Can I <leave? laughs> Why should I combine it? I should go more and go and buy techno. serious about our Christian life. To be devoted to the production of the fruit of God in our hearts. Because we have established that God is looking for fruit, not for the gift. Tell what you have the gift of righteousness. You have the fruit of righteousness. People of God, be comfortable that you are going to heaven. It doesn't matter who you are. Not even a sister pastor here. It doesn't matter who you are. Check your heart. What is in your heart? Check your life. How is your life? Are you producing fruit? Are you a wayside? Are you a careless Christian? You know, Jesus talked at the parable about the foolish virgins, isn't it? Then I come to realize that those who will make it will need extra oil. It's not the foolish ones who are saying, at least let me just enter. Let me just escape. I used to say anybody who say me, I just want to escape. Will not escape. Because Christ, that place, we need extra oil. Extra effort. Extra commitment. And that's what distinguishes a careless Christian from the one that produces works. That how to change your life? What kind of food are you producing? Is there a loss in there? Is there a covetousness in there? Is there envy in there? Is there jealousy in there? Is there anger, bitterness in there? Is there malice in there? Is there kindness? Is there what? Love. Is there patience? Are you producing? Are you a wayside Christian? Are you a careless Christian? Are you making progress in your Christian life that people around you can see and commend you and say, This one, Kai. But the past few days, we have noticed something about him. We have noticed something about her. Are you producing fruits? Is the fruit coming forth? Why are they still calling you names? 